Welcome to Puzzles and Solutions. In this video, I will go through each puzzle from the Ariel Me 2020 IQ test. The IQ tests have 18 puzzles. Before I go through the test, I would like to say this is not an accurate measure of IQ. I will leave the link to the IQ test down below in the description. Also, if you're just looking to get a rough estimation of your IQ, I will leave a couple of better IQ tests as well. And finally, if you're just following along the video, I suggest that you pause the video before each puzzle and try them yourself before listening to my solution. Let's start solving the puzzles. Puzzle number one. This is a simple row puzzle. Let's start by focusing on the amount of dots in each picture. We can quite easily see how moving to the right in a row decreases the amount of dots by one. To figure out how many dots our answer will have, we have to look at the second row. In the second picture, there are four dots, so there should be three dots in our answer. This leaves either answer B or answer D as the correct solution. Next, let's focus on the amount of edges the polygon in each picture has. We see how it increases by one when moving to the right in a row. Going by the second row, we see that the second picture has seven edges and therefore our answer will have eight edges. Answer B has eight edges, so answer B is the correct solution. Puzzle number two. This is a column puzzle. To move down from the pictures in the first row to the pictures in the second row, we just rotate them by 90 degrees clockwise. Going by the third column and rotating the first picture by 90 degrees clockwise, we get answer D as the correct answer. Puzzle number three. This is a row puzzle. When we move to the right in a row, we just move the dots in one position in a clockwise direction. To solve the puzzle, let's look at the second row. The second picture in the second row has a blue dot in the top right corner, which will move down to the middle right. And the yellow dot in the second picture will move from the middle right to the bottom right. Our answer will have a yellow dot in the bottom right corner and a blue dot on the middle right. Answer E is the correct solution. Puzzle number four. This is a column puzzle. If you look at the first column, we see that by rotating the first picture 90 degrees counterclockwise, we get the second picture. To solve the puzzle, we look at the third column and we rotate the first picture by 90 degrees counterclockwise. This leads to answer C being the correct solution. The problem is that answer C is in fact not the official correct solution. This way of solving the puzzle is perfectly logical and leads to the wrong answer. The officially correct way of solving this is by mirroring the images vertically in the columns. In the first column, for example, we can produce the second picture by mirroring the first picture vertically. I think most people will understand conserving the overall symmetry of the puzzle rather than this mirroring effect. To solve the puzzle, we go by the last column and mirror the first picture vertically. This leads to answer B being the correct answer, which is also the officially correct answer. Puzzle number 5. The easiest way to solve this puzzle is just by removing the second column. To produce the third picture in a row, we just look at the first picture and we put the top shape inside of the bottom shape. This leads to answer A being the correct solution. Puzzle number six. This is a column puzzle. We can see that in a specific column, the circles in the first picture is transformed into squares in the same position in the second picture. I simplify this further to the amount of circles in the first picture equals the amount of squares in the second picture. In the third column, we have four circles in the first picture, so there will be four squares in the second picture. Answer C is the correct solution. Puzzle seven. This is another column puzzle. To go from the first picture to the second picture in a column, we rotate the first picture by 90 degrees clockwise and transform the blue triangles into yellow circles. To solve the puzzle, we look at the last column and we have these three triangles in the bottom right corner in the first picture. Rotating it by 90 degrees clockwise will give these three triangles in the bottom left corner instead, which we will transform into yellow circles. Answer A is the correct solution. Puzzle 8. Here we have another mirroring puzzle in the columns, but this one is actually designed well. To go from the first picture in a column to the second picture, we just mirror the first picture vertically. And as I mentioned earlier, most people will have an easier understanding of conserving the overall symmetry of the puzzle. To solve the puzzle, we have to look at the third column and mirror the first picture vertically. This leads to answer B. Answer B is the correct solution. Puzzle number 9. Let's start off by only focusing on the left side of the pictures. In the first row, we have 3 squares in the first picture, 2 squares in the second picture, and 5 squares in the third picture. This is, of course, an addition. 3 squares plus 2 squares equals 5 squares. In the second row, we have 1 square plus 3 squares, so our answer should have 4 squares on the left side. This leaves either answer A or answer D as the correct solution. Let's add the right side back and remove the left side. In the first row, we have two squares, four squares, and three squares. The pattern for this is adding the squares in the two first pictures and dividing by two. So two plus four equals six, and dividing six by two gives three squares in the third picture. For the second row, we have four plus six, which equals 10, and dividing 10 by two gives five squares on the right side in our answer. Answer D is the correct solution. Puzzle number 10. This is an addition puzzle with cancellation. You add the first and the second picture to produce the third picture following these three rules. White plus white equals white. White plus blue or blue plus white equals blue. And blue plus blue equals white. 
If we look at the first row, we can see that any given square follow these rules. To solve the puzzle, we just have to follow the rules in the second row. This gives an answer with a white square in the middle, a white square in the top middle, and the rest of the squares are blue. Answer C is the correct solution. Puzzle 11. This is a diagonal puzzle on both diagonals. Looking at the top right to bottom left diagonals, we see a repetition of colors. In the blue diagonal, we have a repetition of blue shapes. In the green diagonal, we have a repetition of green shapes. And in the red diagonal, we have a repetition of white shapes. Our answer is in the green diagonal, so our answer will be a green shape. This leaves either answer A or answer C as the correct solution. Next, if we look at the top left to bottom right diagonals, we see a repetition of shapes. In the red diagonal, we have a repetition of this tick cross shape. In the green diagonal, we have a repetition of a pentagon shape. And in the blue diagonal, which our answer is in, we have a repetition of a cross with smooth edges. Our answer is in the blue diagonal, so answer C is correct. Puzzle number 12. Starting off, let's focus on the left side of each picture. In the first row, we have no blue squares. In the second row, we have blue squares for every bottom left square. And in the third row, we have two blue squares, one in the bottom left and one in the top left. Notice that our answer has to have a colored square in the top left corner, therefore answer F is not correct. Next, let's focus on the top side of each picture. We have the exact same thing here, just for the green squares in the columns. In the first column, we have no green squares. In the second column, we have one green square on the top right. In the third column, we have two green squares, one on the top right and one on the top left. Looking at the bigger picture, we can clearly see that there has to be a white square in the bottom right corner because none of the rules of the blue or the green squares says that there has to be a colored square in the bottom right corner. This leaves only answer A or B as the correct answer. There is no way really to objectively tell which of these two answers are correct. We could either think that answer A is correct because the green square completely covers the blue square, or we could think that the blue and the green squares mixes to create a cyan square as we see in the answer B. You can kind of reason that answer B is correct because why would the creator of the puzzle include answer B if it was not correct? This made me conclude that answer B is correct the first time I took the test. Answer B is the correct solution and the official correct answer of the test. Puzzle number 13. This specific puzzle I've run into before, this is puzzle 26 from the Mensa Denmark IQ test. The way to solve this puzzle is by seeing that we have three dots which have lines attached to them and they rotate around following some specific rules. Let's start by focusing on the middle left dot. Here I've marked the dot and the line connected to it in every picture. We can see that moving to the right in a row, the line rotates one position in clockwise direction. And moving downwards in a column, we can see that the line rotates in two dot positions in counterclockwise direction. To solve the puzzle, we can look at the third column. The second picture in the third column has a line pointing towards the right, and moving downwards in the column, we just rotated the line in two dot positions in counterclockwise direction. This leads to a line pointing upwards. Only answer C has this, therefore answer C is the correct solution. For everyone watching to understand this puzzle better, I will go through the other dots and the lines, even though we have concluded that C is the correct answer. The middle dot looks like this. It has two lines extending from it, and the lines are on opposite sides of each other. Moving to the right in a row, we have rotation in clockwise direction of one dot position. And moving downwards in a column, we have rotation in counterclockwise direction of one dot position. With these rules, we can conclude that our answer will have a horizontal line, which we can see in answer C. And finally, the dot on middle right looks like this. Moving to the right in a row, we have a clockwise rotation of one dot position. And moving downwards in a column, we have a counterclockwise rotation of two dot positions. This leads to our answer C having a line pointing downwards, from our middle right dot. Answer C is the correct solution. Puzzle number 14. For this puzzle, let's start by focusing on the main circle in each picture. Looking at the first row, we see a 45 degrees clockwise rotation when moving towards the right. Looking at the third column, we have 45 degrees clockwise rotation when moving downwards. Looking at the third row, we see a 45 degrees clockwise rotation when moving towards the left. And finally, looking at the first column, we see a 45 degrees clockwise rotation when moving upwards. Here we can easily see that when you move around in a clockwise pattern, the circle rotates in a 45 degrees clockwise rotation. Looking at the third row, we can take the second picture and rotate it 45 degrees clockwise to get the way our circle is pointing in our answer. The green segment of the circle will point towards the top right. This leaves either answer A, D or E as the correct answer. Let's add the dots back into the picture. The only pattern I found for the dots was that the amount of dots in a row adds up to be 6. If you look at the last row, we already have four dots, therefore our answer needs to have two dots. Answer D is the correct solution. If you find any better pattern for the dots, please let me know in the comments. Puzzle 15. This is a linear puzzle. Let's start by focusing on the white and orange areas. 
we can quite easily see how moving to the right just leads to a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. This will result in our answer having a white area on the left and orange area on the right. Either answer C, D or E is the correct solution. To solve the puzzle, let's put the dots back in. We can see that the blue dots move in two positions in clockwise direction and the white dot moves in one position in clockwise direction. In the fourth picture, we have both the white and the blue dot in the bottom right corner. Moving the white dot once in clockwise direction leads to a white dot in the bottom left corner and moving the blue dot twice in clockwise direction leads to a blue dot in the top left corner. Answer E is the correct solution. Puzzle number 16. This is a very bad puzzle in my opinion. I personally found this puzzle so bad that I considered not even making a video about this test. But I changed my mind just in case that there was someone out there taking this test and they were confused about the puzzles. So why do I think this puzzle is so bad? I found three different ways to explain the first row and each way leads to a different answer in the second row. The first way looks like this. First, we move each square in the first picture once towards the right and then we do a simple addition with cancellation. White plus white equals white white plus orange or orange plus white equals orange and orange plus orange equals white. To solve the puzzle we just go by the second row. First we move every square in the first picture once towards the right and then we add it with the second picture following the rules. This leads to answer D which is not the officially correct answer. The second way of explaining the first row looks like this. Instead of moving the squares once to the right we rotate the first picture by 180 degrees. After this rotation, we add the first and the second picture with the addition rules I already mentioned. For the second row, we rotate the first picture by 180 degrees, and we add it with the second to get answer F as the correct answer. Answer F is not the official correct answer though. The third and official correct way to solve it is by inverting the addition rules such that white plus white equals orange, white plus orange or orange plus white equals white, and orange plus orange equals orange. This form of addition holds up for the first row and doing the same for the second row leads to answer B as the correct answer. Answer B is the correct solution. Puzzle number 17. This is a diagonal puzzle on both diagonals. Let's start by looking at the top right to bottom left diagonal. In the red diagonal we have repetition of red shapes, in the blue diagonal we have repetition of blue shape, and in the yellow diagonal we have repetition of yellow shapes. Our answer is in the blue diagonal, so our answer is a blue shape. This leaves answer A or answer F as the correct answer. To solve the puzzle, let's look at the top left to bottom right diagonal. In the yellow diagonal, we have a repetition of two lines, one horizontal and one vertical. In the blue diagonal, we have a repetition of one horizontal line. And finally, in the red diagonal, which our answer is in, we have a repetition of one vertical line. Our answer is blue and contains a vertical line. Answer A is the correct solution. Puzzle 18. This is the final puzzle of the test. The first thing to notice is that on the top right to bottom left diagonals, there is a repetition of the inner shape. In the red diagonal we have an X shape, in the yellow diagonal we have a diamond shape, and in the blue diagonal, which our answer is in, we have a tick plus sign. This leaves either answer A or answer D as the correct answer. The rest of the shape in the pictures repeat in the columns. In the blue column we have a star shape, in the red column we have a rectangle shape, and in the yellow column, which our answer is in, we have a circle shape. Answer A is the correct solution. After answering with every answer I came up with in this video, I got this as my score. After this, I retook the test a couple of times and somehow I got a lower score even though I picked the exact same answers. My first theory was that the IQ test was time-based. The longer time you would spend picking your answers, the lower IQ you would get. To test this, I took the test two times where I measured my time spent on taking the test. I spent 30 seconds on this attempt and I got a score of 174 IQ. I spent 60 seconds on this attempt and I got a score of 178. From this I could conclude that the test was not time based because spending more time gave me a higher score. The final thing I was curious about is what was the maximum and minimum score possible when you answer every puzzle correctly. So I decided to spend an hour of my life and retake the test 100 times. This is my measured data from 100 tests. The lowest IQ possible is 166 and the highest possible is 178. So just by pure luck, I got the highest IQ possible of 178 on my first attempt. From this data we can tell that there is a difference of 12 IQ score just by random chance. Also I think there is an uniformly distribution of the IQ, meaning that we have an equal likely probability of getting every score. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again in the next puzzle.